Hi everyone, uh, I am very excited and honored to be getting an opportunity to speak at the India Inclusion Summit 2017. You see the fundamental idea that the summit stands for, which is that each one of us has the ability to make a distinct and unique contribution to the society and workplace of which we are a part, is something that I deeply believe in. And that's why I'm very happy to be getting an opportunity to share this platform, uh, to, to share my views with you on this platform. Now, as I began thinking about the topic that I should speak about, one thought that I recall was the message that former Vice President Hamid Ansari famously conveyed at the speech that he gave at the National Law School of India University here in Bangalore in the last weeks of his Vice Presidency. While tolerance is a necessary virtue in a society like ours, Ansari argued, it is by no means sufficient. If we want to create a truly inclusive and plural society, we must be able to move from tolerance towards acceptance. Now, to be clear, this is not a new idea. Centuries ago, Swami Vivekananda said that we must not merely tolerate all religions, but we must actively embrace them as truth is the basis of all religions. Now, you may wonder what all of this has to do with creating an accessible society in which the disabled are recognized as equal citizens. You see, in my view, the society's attitude towards the disabled is premised upon the belief that merely tolerating the disabled is sufficient for the society to stay true to its value of respecting diversity and celebrating it. You see this in the behavior of the teacher who grudgingly agrees to accept a student with a disability in her class without acknowledging the existence of the student for all intents and purposes. You see this in the behavior of the family which feels that if it has a child with a disability, that that is a God-given curse and that their only obligation to the child extends to making available economic resources. You see this in the behavior of the friend who thinks that in order for him or her not to appear exclusionary, it is sufficient for them to invite their disabled friend to a social event without taking any steps to see how that friend, how they can ensure that the friend doesn't feel isolated or left out. Now, let me share a small personal story with you to drive home the importance of moving from tolerance towards acceptance. You know, I was born and brought up in a fairly small town in, in Nagpur, which is a very quiet, tranquil place. The only thing that most people know about Nagpur when I tell them that I am from Nagpur are its oranges, you know. So, back in 1994, the year in which I was born, we did not have access to assistive technology or to the internet. If you add to that the constraints of growing up in a small town, you get some sense of how heavily the odds were stacked against us. Since my family did not have any kind of a user manual for how a child with a disability could be provided the same opportunities as their able-bodied counterparts, they did the best that they could with whatever they knew and we took some right steps and some wrong ones and trial and error is how we learned. Now, I went to a mainstream school in Nagpur in large part because the only special school there was a Marathi medium school. After hearing my profile, all the awards and scholarship, the roads and other things, you may feel that I had a truly fulfilling and exhilarating school life. What that bio doesn't tell you is how for seven out of the 10 years that I was in school, I was made to sit alone on the first bench under the mistaken belief that that would help me use the limited vision that I had or hear what was happening. When in reality, the only thing that it achieved was to prevent me from forming meaningful friendships with my friends with my peers or from interacting with them. If you hear my bio, you may feel, you may not be able to recognize that in science and math class, my 
teachers practically took no steps to ensure that I was able to digest the information that was being conveyed, which my sighted counterparts were digesting visually. My bio will not tell you that every day in games period or during the assembly session, I used to sit alone in class when all my peers would go out and play only because no one was interested in figuring out how such an experience could be made accessible to me. Now, to be clear, when I say all this, I'm not trying to demean my school. You know, I'm truly grateful to them for inculcating in me the values of hard work, grit, and determination, which have been the key determinants of my success ever since. The short point that I'm trying to make is that because of the lowered expectations that the society has from the disabled, we consider even a school willing to admit a child with a disability as a bastion of diversity. We consider a family which provides resources to its disabled child as a model of inclusion. We consider a friend who accepts someone with a disability as someone worthy of unmixed praise. In my opinion, while, ac while acknowledging the fact that a school deserves praise for admitting a student with a disability, we must equally ensure that their obligations don't end there and that they take steps to ensure that the student is able to extract maximum value from their school life. While appreciating the family which is able to provide their disabled child vital economic resources, we must equally question and criticize them if they fail to give their disabled child the space that she needs in order to make her own mistakes and the freedom to venture out into the world. While acknowledging that a friend who accepts someone with a disability deserves recognition, we must equally ensure that they don't practice, they don't merely say that they are practicing inclusion, but take active steps and that they don't feel that accepting someone with a disability gives them somehow an upper hand in the friendship. And now this brings me to the second point that I wanted to make today, second and final point. You see, when most people think about discrimination against the disabled, they think of overt and direct forms of discrimination. In reality, however, I would submit that discrimination against the disabled happens in several subtle and indirect ways. It happens in the lingering looks that you get at an airport when someone sees you walking in with a cane. It happens in the questions that people never stop asking about your competence, no matter what you may be able to accomplish. It happens in the whispers that people share behind your back whenever they see you pass. All these actions, even though they may not appear discriminatory, reinforce in the disabled person's mind the thought that I do not belong here. So the one central message that I would like you to walk away with once my talk is over is that true and meaningful inclusion is not merely the opposite of exclusion. It entails celebrating and respecting the diversity that someone with a disability brings to the table. It entails ensuring that we don't consider a disabled person extraordinary only because they are able to achieve ordinary everyday things. In other words, what it entails is setting higher standards for the society which claims to be committed to the value of inclusion and for the disabled person who claims to be committed to strive for excellence. Thank you.